Amy. I was gonna say Amy. But it is. Hello everybody, it's your girl Jay, and today I am here with the mid-year book freakout tag, which is an absolute staple on booktube. It was originally created by Ellie and Chami, so I will leave both their links down below if you want to check those out. I have been filming this tag since like 2016, I believe. I don't have one for 2018, and I'm not really sure why that is. I guess I just didn't feel like filming that video, but all the other years will be linked down below if you want to check those out. But basically, this is a tag that takes place midway through the year, so the end of June, and it's just people gushing about all the books that they've read so far and what they thought of them. So without further ado, let us get started. So the first question is, what is the best book you've read in 2021 so far? And mine is In the Ravenous Dark by A.M. Strickland. I freaking loved this book so much. It follows Rovin, who is a pansexual blood mage. She basically takes it upon herself to start a rebellion against the living and the dead, and it's like the story of that, but it is just so freaking good. The cast of characters in this are just so amazing. It is such an underrated gem. Like, I haven't heard pretty much anybody but Bethany from Bookishly Bethany talk about this book, and that's where I found it from. So if you are watching this video, please, 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 if there's one thing that you take from this video, it's read this freaking book because it's so stinking good. Next is the best sequel you read in 2021 and I am going to say it was Heartstopper Volume 3 by Alice Osman. I have not read Volume 4 unless it has all been added onto the like webtoon site that it's on because I have been keeping up with the chapters there, but I have no idea if it's finished and it's all uploaded or not because I keep trying to get it into my library but my library won't buy it but the third volume amazing five out of five stars it's definitely my favorite out of the three four and a half that I've read so far if you live under a rock and don't know Heartstopper is about these two characters Nick and Charlie they start off as friends and then they fall in love and it's like their story and it's like the cutest thing ever. The side characters are amazing. Like everybody on booktube has read this graphic novel so I feel like I don't really need to explain it but just chef's kiss. Such a cute story. Highly recommend if you haven't already checked it out. Next is new release that you have not read yet but want to and I have so many on this list that I could name but I will just do one that I'm very excited for and I just haven't picked it up yet and I don't really know why. Mostly because I've been trying to get down on my ARC backlist and this is obviously not an arc, but it is A Dark and Hollow Star by Ashley Shuttleworth, and this is like a sapphic revenge story with Faye and set in Toronto, which I live very close to. So I, for one, am very excited about one, revenge story. I love those stories. Two, sapphic. Three, Toronto. Like that just, ugh. I'm so excited. I think it's gonna be so good. I honestly have not heard anybody actually talk about this book other than like hauling it. I haven't heard anybody like physically read it and tell us how it is, so maybe I'll be the first if we ever get around to reading it, but like I said, beyond ecstatic for this one. Next is most anticipated release for the second half of the year. Mine would probably be Gods and Monsters by Shelby Mahern. Serpent and Dove and Blood and Honey I loved so much, so I just really want to see how the story concludes. I think I gave Serpent and Dove 5 and Blood and Honey 4.5, so I'm hoping that Gods and Monsters bumps up to a five so it can be like a nice well-rounded series conclusion for me and I don't hate the book because I'll be really upset if I do. I just really want to see Lou and Coco. I don't really care about Reed to be honest. I kind of didn't like him very much in the second book. He was okay in the first book but the second book I was just like Bleh! hate you. Bye. So maybe he'll get better in this next book. We'll see but we were left on such a cliffhanger with the second book so I need the third one in my life. Next, biggest disappointment. I have two answers for this. The first one would be Blades of Secrets by Trisha Levenseller. The Shadow Between Us by Trisha Levenseller was my favorite book last year and I was so excited to get another book from Trisha. I've only read that one book. I own Daughter of a Pirate King but 
not the second book in that series or Air of the Wild or whatever that one is. Literally only read Shadows Between Us and loved it so much. It was amazing. So I was expecting something similar with this one. I'm not saying that it was a bad book. It wasn't. I gave it a 3.5. Like, I enjoyed it. I had a great time. But I just wanted the shadows between us again, if that makes sense. Like, I wanted the same vibes, and that's definitely not what Blades of Secrets was, which, like, jokes on me because I should have known that, but, you know, it's just what I wanted. The heart wants what it wants, and I didn't receive it, so. And then my second answer for this would be Witches Steeped in Gold by Shannon Smart, and this one I thought was going to be a 5 out of 5 star read for me. I was so excited about it, and then I read it, and I was so confused with everything that was happening. I had no idea what was going on for, like, the entire book, and it was just very underwhelming and kind of boring until, like, this much left of the book. Like, it, it took a very long time to get it interesting and exciting. Which, like, I understand because it is a fantasy novel with a very complex magic system and just a lot of background that needed to be presented. So, like, I get it, but also I don't want it. And I don't know if it's because, like, my little brain couldn't grasp everything or if I just didn't like the book. I'm planning on rereading it at some point, probably very soon to when the second is released, just so that I can, you know, hopefully grasp everything that's going on so I can love the series as well because so many people adore it and I just want to be on that bandwagon too and I just wasn't and it was disappointing. Next up is Biggest Surprise and I'm giving that to Glitter by April Lynn Pike. I had such low expectations going into the this book. I did not think it was going to be very good. I was like, it'll be like a three star at most. But I was so pleasantly surprised with this. It basically follows this girl who witnesses the crown prince doing something very bad and her mother bribes him into a marriage with her in order to have their silence. She wants nothing to do with the prince because he's very violent and just not like a good person and so she hatches a plan for her escape which ends up being the illicit selling of this drug called glitter and it's like the story of her trying to escape and selling this drug throughout the kingdom but nobody knows it's a drug and it was just really good. It was a lot better than I thought it was going to be. This is another one that I think is definitely an underrated gem, so definitely check it out. And the cool thing about this is that it's set in like an 1800s court kind of thing, but it has like advanced technology. It's just really cool. I Next is favorite new author, either a debut or new to you, and I had to think very hard about this one, and I have a lot that I could have said if I was going for like, I've read one book from this author. I could I could have said Sally Thorne, I read The Hating Game, absolutely loved it. I could have said Adeline Grace, she wrote All the Stars and Teeth and Ties of Fate, but I absolutely loved Stars and Teeth, but was not the biggest fan of the second book. It's definitely one of my disappointing books of the year because I love the first one so much, so I striked her. And then I could have also said the author of Ace of Spades because I read Ace of Spades and I freaking loved it, gave it 5 out of 5 stars, but I wanted to go with one author that I've read multiple books from because then I know that I really like this author because, you know, like Trisha Levenseller, she tricked me, so I wanted to like be sure that this was my favorite new to me author and I decided to go with Helen Huang who wrote Kiss Quotient and she also wrote The Bride Test. She also has a third book coming out but I loved this book. I thought it was so good. I read The Bride Test, literally finished it yesterday. Although I didn't like it as much as this one, I still really liked it. These are a set of companion books, this one, The Bride Test, and then the third one I think is called Heart Principle and it follows Kai who is the main character in The Bride Test. His bride brother Quan, who I freaking love in The Bride Test, so I am beyond excited about that one. This is probably the author that I've read multiple books from that is new to me that I really liked, so I'm going with Helen Huang. Next is newest fictional crush, and I took a while to figure this out. At first I was like, oh, Michael, kiss quotient consent king. We love him. But then I remembered my man, my boo, my angel, king of my heart, Nikolai from the Grishaverse. I freaking love that man. I just, ugh. Anytime he was on page, I just swoon. 
I love him. I have only just met him in Siege and Storm. I literally have not read this book. I have not read Ruin and Rising or the Six of Crows duology, which I don't even know if he's in that one. But I know that this is his book, so I thought I'd hold it up. But I am so excited. I need to finish <laughs> Ruin and Rising so I can read this one and just be fully immersed in Nikolai. And then I need to find a copy of Rules of Wolves because I don't own it and I need it so badly. That's probably another new release that I am very excited about, but I don't own it, so I didn't choose it, but I want it. And then I also wanted to mention like my newest girl fictional crush because, you know, we need our pansexual representation on this channel because we love pansexuality. And I'm going with Jane from One Last Stop. When I was reading that book, I was like, I don't know if I want to be you or date you. Oh my god, I love Jane. I think she is just so badass and cool and I just, ugh, again, don't know if I want to be her or date her, so it's a struggle in my mind. Next up, newest favorite character. I have two answers for this because I honestly could not decide. They're from the same book, so I'm gonna say it counts, but either Rovin or Jaffa from In the Ravenous Dark by A.M. Strickland. Rovin is such a badass, kick-ass female character. She's just so like unapologetically herself and again I don't know if I have a crush on her or want to be her. And then Jaffa is the non-binary prince who becomes the best friend of Rovin and they are just so much fun to read. Right from the very first time they were on page, I was obsessed with them and just wanted to be their friend. So those two are probably my newest favorite characters. Next, book that made you cry. I do not cry at books, so I always find this question so stinking hard, but I try to pick a book that did make me feel emotions you know, because we're very cold-hearted on this channel. But I ended up picking Grown by Tiffany D. Jackson. This is like a grooming, sexual assault, very not fun book, but very good book. It just handles a lot of dark topics, and although I was prepared for that because I knew what this book was going into it, I would not say it was a good time emotionally. Like, you really feel for Enchanted and you just want to get her out of the situation that she is in because it is just so not ideal for a young girl to be in that situation and I really felt for what she was going through even though I've never experienced it. You just, it's, it's a very emotional book. I'm sure a lot of people actually did cry with it but again, I have no heart or soul so. Next, book that made you happy. I, again, had a hard time with this because I have so many books that put me in a good mood, but I tried to pick a book that had characters that I really felt like they were like my friends and they just make me very happy when they're on page. And I ended up going with The Gilded Wolves by Roshani Chotsky. This is the first book in a duology, I believe. The second book is The Splintered Serpents, which again is another one I do not own. I really need to find a copy of it because I need to know what happens to these characters. But like I said, I just felt like they were my friends and they just made me very happy. They're just such lovable characters. And I mean, the story is also really good, so win-win. Okay, this one, the next question, prompt, whatever you want to call it, is the most beautiful book on your shelf that you were either gifted or bought. And ho 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 ho, I went with The Nature of Witches by Rachel Griffin. It's not much when you look at it here, although I really freaking love this cover. I think it's so cool. But when you take the dust jacket off, can we just... Holy shit. This is the most gorgeous book I have ever seen. I have a love, a love for butterflies, so I just freaking love this. I think it is the most stunning book ever. I just want it naked on my shelf, but... I have not read it, I have no idea if it's good or not, but this is a book that even if I give it one star, I will take the fucking dust jacket off and I will just display this beauty on my shelf. And that's a big thing for me because if you've been on this channel forever, you know that if I don't give a book 3.5 stars or higher, I get rid of it. I give it to the thrift store and I don't want it in my sight, but I would keep this just because it's gorgeous. And then the last question is, what books do you need to read by the end of the year? And I could literally sit here for six hours and just go through my TBR because it's 700 books long, and that is not an exaggeration. It is literally 700 books long, I'm pretty sure. But we're not going to do that, so I just made like a stack of books that were literally just beside me right now, and that's what we're going with. So this is my stack. We got The Poppy War. We got Star Eater, For the Wolves, Sweet and Bitter Magic, Legendborn, 
and Realm Breakers. So these are just a few of the books that I need to read, but I also have a thousand more surrounding me right now, which are not for this video. I just don't put anything away. So. All right, everybody. So that was my mid-year book freakout tag 2021. Let me know down below if you have read any of these books, what you thought of them out of the books that I still need to read. Which one should I read first? Let me know and I will see you all in my next video. Goodbye!